Hello everyone, my name is Mariela Mendez Morales. Currently, I am a PhD student at the University of Coimbra in Portugal, but today I would like to present to you the findings of the research I conducted to obtain my master's degree at the University of Sheffield under the supervision of Professor Jürgen Beck. This research is entitled Determining the Yield Surface of a Metal Using Notched Strip Specimens Geometry Optimization. So, what are we talking about here exactly? To begin, let us break down the title and define some key concepts, starting with yield surface. We are most likely very familiar with the one-dimensional stress strain curve of a ductile material, like the one we see in the figure. As we know, this curve can be experimentally obtained using standardized steel coupons and uniaxial tensile tests. But what happens when the material is under a combination of stresses in different directions? Well, in a three-dimensional space, many stress combinations can cause plastic deformations. So now we no longer have a curve, but a surface as the one we see in the figure. Determining this surface by experimental means is quite complex, and this is why we often use yield criterions to approximate it, for example, Tresca or von Mises. Now that we have defined the yield surface, let's talk about the role of the notched strip specimens in the scope of this topic. Decades ago, while studying plasticity, professors Bichlard and Hill developed a theory that allows for a much simpler experimental procedure to determine the yield surface in isotropic materials. The premise is to create a weak net area, generally known as the neck, in the specimen. The neck can be initiated either by grooving the strip or cutting oblique notches. By giving this weak net neck a certain angle, theta, and pulling the strip in uniaxial tension, yielding is forced to occur simultaneously in shear and tension along the neck. If the load P at which yielding starts and the angle of relative velocity C are measured, it is possible to plot the yield locus using any known yield criterion. To develop the theory, both Bichlard and Hield consider that each side of the neck moves like a rigid body relatively to the other. They also used an isotropic material with rigid plastic behavior and assumed that the stress along the neck remained constant. Several researchers tried to put these concepts into practice. However, they encountered numerous issues which finally led Brian Parker to write in their paper that the ascertaining of a yield surface is an elusive affair. Probably because of these unpromising results, the investigation was put on hold for many years until recently when Beck and other academics implemented new ideas that allow accounting for anisotropy, do not require the recording of the load P, and use digital image correlation techniques to measure the angle C. Basically, theoretical developments were introduced by implementing a parametric equation to define the yield criterion and using the associativity flow rule for the calculation of the vectors normal and tangential to the yield surface. Despite these improvements, they still encountered diffuse necks, or no necks at all, brittle fracture, and large dispersion in the results. So, in summary, the purpose of this research is to approach these last three issues by determining if and how is the geometry affecting the outcomes, and lastly, to set the basis for a standard test specimen that ensures the best possible results. And this is where the geometry optimization has an important contribution. To determine if the geometry is indeed accountable for the dispersion in the results, 
144 finite element simulations were carried out using the software Abacus and Python scripting. For every simulation, the displacement of the measuring points and the path of the stresses were collected. Later, the results were analyzed in terms of experimental observations and statistical tools based on the variation of age, being age one of the parameters in Hill's generalized yield criterion presented before. To validate the finite element simulations, notch coupons of austenitic 1.4307 and ferritic 1.4316 stainless steel were used. This table summarizes their mechanical properties. Moreover, using the values of the previous slide, the material stress-strain curves were modeled using the ramberg osgood equation to simulate the plastic nonlinear behavior of a stainless steel. Lastly, the yielding behavior of the materials was modeled using an anisotropic yield surface with an associated flow rule available in Abacus through the potential keyword. The yield surface is user-defined by six stress ratios. Fortunately, these stress ratios have a one-to-one -one correspondence to Hill's anisotropic coefficients. Once the materials were defined, a mesh sensibility study was used to calibrate the model. Solid elements, mirror boundary conditions, quadratic 20-node brick elements, and a swept hexahedral mesh were selected for this exercise. The study was successfully verified by reproducing the experimental results previously obtained by other researchers. Another preliminary activity completed was the sensitivity study of the location of the measuring points, also using finite element analysis. For this, it was concluded to position the measuring points 5 mm above and below the center of the neck. Having calibrated the model, the geometric study was conducted using the ferritic alloy of stainless steel. Four geometric variables were explored. R sub W, or the ratio between the width of the specimen and the width of the neck. The next angle theta, the opening angle alpha, and R sub R, or the ratio between the specimen's thickness and the root of the notch. Now, two very significant observations were found. Looking at the path of stresses along the neck in the figure, we can see how sharp roots in the notch induce large stress concentrations, suggesting a potential brittle fracture. On the other hand, the path of stresses perpendicular to the neck reveals a less defined path for larger neck angles, where theta equals 80 and a strange three-crested stress path for large notch opening angles, as we can see in this example. In each analysis, the angle of relative velocity, C, was calculated from the displacement of the measuring points. A typical evolution of C as a function of the displacement between the measuring points is shown in the figure. As we can see, the measurings display a slight early maximum at first yield, followed by a constant plateau. This is consistent with experimental observations. The value of H was calculated at the maximum, as this was believed to best represent the initial yield surface. To decipher the variability in the results, a statistical analysis was performed. First, descriptive statistics were used to compare the parameter H obtained using finite element modeling with the one found by previous researchers. A tendency was discovered in all variables except the next angle. Because of this, a one-factor analysis of variance was conducted. According to this statistical analysis, the variation in the next angle does not affect the variability of the results. At this point, the ratio between the width appeared to be the strongest cause for variation. 
under this discovery, a two-factor analysis of variance was performed. It was found that the variation in the results is indeed affected by an interaction between the ratio of the widths, r sub w, and the ratio of the notch to thickness, r sub r. This suggests that further research on this interaction should be conducted. Finally, it was possible to confirm that the geometry of the specimen has a significant influence over the dispersion of the results, especially the width of the neck. We also discovered that the neck angle plays an important role when trying to avoid diffuse stress paths, that the notch root radius is key to control the brittle fracture, and lastly, that opening angles between 40 and 60 degrees do not have a great impact on the results. Taking all of these conclusions into account, the behavior of the test specimen was well understood and the dimensions for a standardized test piece were determined, as we can see in this slide. From this research, we can conclude that if the experiment is conducted using a specimen in which the width of the neck is half the total width, the neck angle equals 60 degrees, the opening angle is 40 degrees, and the notch root radius is half the specimen thickness, results with low variation can be obtained without experiencing a premature brittle fracture or a diffuse neck. Now that we are coming to the end, I would like to say that even though the knowledge gathered from this research threw some light on how to determine the yield surface by experimental procedures, it also opened the door for more questions and future research. It would be ideal to perform the experiment using different types of metals, expand the finite element analysis using a wider range of values, establish tolerance margins for the variations, explore other geometries and improve the manufacturing of the specimens. I sincerely thank you for taking an interest in this topic and for listening to this presentation. I hope you enjoyed it and please don't hesitate to ask any questions either now in the live session or by email to the address you have on the screen. I would also like to thank the Eurosteel committees that made this event possible and Professor Jürgen Beck for his guidance and support on this research.